Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're back, we're back, and we're ready for the message on today. I was in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, 16 and 17. I would like to go ahead and start with that scripture first. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is writing a letter to his protege, Timothy. His mentee, Timothy. He's letting him know that all scripture is given by God, it's inspired by God, and it's written by man. So God inspired, inspired these men to write the Word of God. And it's, it's given for correction, it's given for uh, reproof. Everyone does not like to be um, approached and corrected. Praise the Lord. But this is for our own good. The only way we can get better is by correction. We can see on the news on today how many people are going to trial because they're being corrected. And some will stand up for what is right and some will, um, they will side on the side of the person that is corrupt. But we thank the Lord that God does not have any hidden agendas, and He is just. He is faithful, and He is loving to everyone. And God wants everyone to do right. And so in this scripture, in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 17, this, the Word of God is supposed to be for everyone, everyone. And if we, we, when we know to do right and we don't do right, that's a sin. So this word is for us all. And um, there was an illustration where this parent was asking this child about this lesson that was in this book. And the child says, that's not in my book. And that's the, that's the thing is that when we decide to rip out this page or that page or not include this page or, or we just preach about certain things or teach about certain things, it's just like us saying, it's not in our Bible. That's not in our Bible or that's not what that says. So we must get a better understanding of what is in the Word of God. It says, in all thy getting, get understanding. And that is in the Word of God. That is in the Word of God. So there should not be someone hindering the pastor from preaching certain things. The pastor should be hearing from God and disseminating His Word to God's people. I would like to go Back to that scripture in 2 Timothy 3. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We should be trying to be righteous. And we're only made righteous, that means in right standing with God, by us having a reconciled relationship with God. That means we have repented, we have come to God through Jesus, and we have made right our wrongs. Jesus is the only way. It says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Every work is not good. Especially if it's not in the Lord. I had a conversation um, through, uh, I was um, just giving feedback and I was talking about um, um, knowledge absent of God is evil. And sometimes we like to throw in our two cents here and there and God is nowhere in what we say. In the Word of God it says that we should be um, quick to hear and slow to speak. We have two ears and one mouth. 
Now let's go over to Ephesians. Now, the church is supposed to be united in God's truth. And Christ is supposed to be the head. Now, I would like to go over to um, what we see in, the, in uh, the day that we're living is some people that want to be a mother and or a grandmother or a great-grandmother and they have never experienced a menstrual cycle. And we have some fathers want to be a woman and vice versa and the father is the undisputed person of the household and in the Word of God Jesus gave the title God as he's the father he gave God the title of father and mother Eve was the mother of all living things. And we know that a mother is a person that has a child and a father is a person that begets a, a child. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for those who fill in the gap. But the, the main point that I'm getting at, and I didn't come up with a title yet, is a father knows his child and a mother knows their child. And in Ephesians, it speaks about how Children are supposed to obey and honor their parents because they want to live a long life. And parents are not to provoke their children. Provoke their children to do wrath. And we know that, that um, you can provoke someone to do something wrong by keep on getting on their case, but... See, a parent knows because a parent in, in the um there was a um there's a, a um a quote it says the young know the rules but the old know the way. That means the 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 young know the rules but the old know how to pace themselves. They know how to take on the rules. They have experience, they have wisdom, they've done this before. And um, I was in a Bible study, and they were talking about Caleb was Caleb was 85, and Joshua was 80, and the importance of having someone of wisdom. But today they just want someone uh, uh, that's young to take on the load. But I understand that that um, Caleb and, and Joshua were like twice the age of 40. But sometimes God may use anyone. Remember David was young. Remember Jeremiah was young. Remember Solomon was young. But they depended on the Lord for their guidance. So all, I'm, all I am saying is that we see that where this world is headed with their um some of the world, or I say some people are in uh, a denial that the, the world has gone the wrong way or contrary to God. And they need to get right. But they're like, no, let's ride this thing out. Let's keep on having fun and ride this wave. Let's see how much time I have left. I have four minutes left. Do you want to come up with a title for this? No. Okay, so the title is A Father is a Father defined by God. And a mother is a mother defined by God. We, we take stuff, we twist stuff, we, we, we change stuff to fit what we feel, and it is not of God. A lot of times it is not of God. I would like to close out with the song, the lyrics to Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of Our Fathers. My 
mother will be singing the song, Faith of Our Fathers. Afterwards, the doors of the church are going to be opened. And then we will close out the service. Faith of our fathers living still, in spite of dungeon fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts be hard with joy whenever we hear that glorious word. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to Thee till death. Our fathers chained in prison dark, we're still in heart and conscience free. How sweet would be their children's fate If they, like them, could die for thee Faith of a father's holy faith We will be true to thee till death Faith of our fathers, we still strive to win our nations unto thee. And though the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be true. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to Thee till death. Faith of our Father's we will love, both friend and foe, in all our strife. And priest thee too, as love knows I, by kindly words and virtuous life. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for my mother singing that song. I attempted to try to do it before, but I thank the Lord for her uh, doing justice to that song. I pushed it. I chopped it up, but I thank the Lord for my mother singing that song. We thank the Lord for fathers. We thank the Lord for mothers. We thank the Lord for, they call it a uh, we, uh, we we thank the Lord for how we thank the Lord for strong fathers that have a backbone. Praise the Lord. Someone may try something on someone that they they may feel that they can get by, but they're not gonna try it on a person that they know that is going to put them in check. Now I'm reminded by the chessboard. The queen can move horizontal, diagonal, however many spaces she wants to move. If there's free spaces, she can move there. She can move horizontal, she can move um, diagonal, she can move from side to side. She cannot do what the, uh, the horse, the horse does though, that's the L shape. 
but I'm reminded when a pawn makes it to the other side, they can re um, they can get the they can replace that pawn. You can replace that pawn with the with any piece, but you cannot if replace that pawn with a king. You cannot replace that pawn with a king. Any other piece than the king. Of course, you're not going to replace it with a pawn, but you you can replace it any other piece than the pawn and the king. If you made it that far being a pawn, what's the purpose of you being a pawn? You promote yourselves. But um, we thank the Lord for fathers. We thank the Lord for those who stand in the gap. And one thing about it is that there's nothing like having a father. There's nothing like having a father. Someone may be a mentor, but for someone that has birthed someone into existence and has taken the time out with the child, they know everything about their child. They know their child's weaknesses. They know their child's strength. And we thank the Lord for being, we thank the Lord for God, the Father being the creator of the heaven and the earth. So that means he knows all about us. He knows all about our troubles, our struggles. He knows what bothers us. He knows exactly what we need. That's why we can go to Jesus. Jesus is the advocate for the Father. Praise the Lord. So if there's someone out there who has been listening to this message, you listen to this message and you heard what it says about how all scripture is given by inspiration of God and how it's supposed to be here to help us to grow and the admonition of God is, is here for us to grow, is here for us to learn, and we are here to be of a help to other people. But we thank the Lord for parents because a parent has gone through more than a child has gone through. And a child needs a parent. It doesn't matter how old the child becomes. The child will never be as smart as the parent. Unless they become a parent. And then they receive that double portion of their knowledge along with their parent's knowledge. And it, it may be well with us. Yes, you have a comment. Yeah, I wrote down this, checks and balances. You know, God put it so that his son uh, did not speak for himself, but he only spoke what God said. And in this world, we do have checks and balances. That's why you have uh, people that are trained to be supervisors. You have pastors that are trained and they, they rightly divide the word of truth. And that's how we as our lay people we have to read so that we will know the will of God for our lives. Because sometimes you somebody can tell you something but for you to read it yourself and know so when people are talking to you, you don't necessarily have, or, or people are acting in a certain way, you don't have to say anything, but you already know because you are meditating on that word day and night. You don't have to say anything. You, you don't have to respond. You just, you know. You don't have to tell them that you know. That's why, you know, that you're, we're in the world, but we're not of it.
checks and balance. This word uh, is proved, was proved in the Old Testament and a lot of it came to fruition. It talked about there was going to be a Savior coming. And in the New Testament, the Savior came. He lived on this earth and he died. He was an example because man couldn't do it. So God had to, to <coughs> send the second Adam in order to to make things right in order for us to be still to go back to the Father to go back to, to the Father God uh, and, and be ready when he comes to the earth this week it won't be like in the old days he's coming back with fire in his hand, fire next time he said you not destroy the, the earth with uh, water. But because of disobedience, you see all of these earthquakes and uh, storms because of disobedience. So we have to get back in line with God. Okay. Appreciate your remarks. Thank the Lord for my. I thank the Lord for my mom's, my mother's remarks. Praise the Lord. I like how she said it's about having checks and balances. It was not meant for the mother to be the father or for the father to be the mother. It was meant for there to be checks and balances in the family. Praise the Lord. It was meant God knew what he was doing when he put the family in place. God doesn't need us to revise or to remix anything. He just needs us to obey his word and to follow his word and to apply his word and to live by his word and to speak his word and to tell others about his word and who is his word jesus his word is jesus now if it's someone listening to this message listening to the remarks or comments listening to the interjections listening to um the worship and um I thank the Lord for you taking the time out to listen to this entire message and dialogue and and listen to the scripture and worship. And we just pray and ask the Lord to please touch you, please strengthen you. And if you do not know Jesus in your sin, here's the time to get it right. And say, well, Lord, I had it all mixed up. I had it all confused. I thought this way. I thought that way. But, Lord, I realize, I have come to my senses that your word is true. And it's, your word is to all people. Praise the Lord. Especially believers should be following your word. Believers should be following Jesus. I said should be. All of us have a, a part in our lives where we can be better and that's what we're here for, to be better each and every day. Here's the time to get right what we got wrong. If you do not know Jesus right now or maybe you have backslidden, that means gone contrary and your thoughts, your ways, Here's your chance to ask the Lord to forgive you for your sin. Here's your chance to come to Jesus. Here's your chance to say, Lord, I thought I had it all right. I thought I was all together, but now I know that I need you. I need you right now. I need you in my day. I don't want to just start off my day, but I want to start, continue on in Jesus, and to finish off my day in Jesus. The Lord, please forgive me for my sins, my shortcomings. Please forgive me for my ignorances. 
please forgive me for my wrongdoings. Please forgive me for the things that I've done unknowingly. And Lord, I thank you because you're forgiving and loving God. We thank you for covering us. We thank you for keeping us and sustaining us. Lord, we thank you for making a way for us. And I believe in Jesus that he came, lived, and died. And I believe in God that he raised Jesus from the dead. And thank you for saving me. Thank you for reconciling me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for purging me. Thank you for clearing me. Thank you for blotting all of my iniquities out. In Jesus' name, we pray amen, amen, and amen. Now to the benediction. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the powers that work us in us, and him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. And everyone said amen, amen, and amen.